So, um, so just wanted to welcome everyone again. Uh, we are recording, so feel free to um to have your video on or off as you like. We will get into some breakout room discussion later on. So at that time, I would like to encourage you to turn your video on at that time. But right now, feel free to any to do anything you'd like. Um, make yourself comfortable. Right, stretch. This is still early in the morning. Make sure that you you get the physical activities, get your drink, get your coffee, tea, um, make yourself very comfortable in this environment. And um, so I just want to let, let you know that at the same time when we are having this workshop here with all the fellow faculty members, our TA team, my colleague Shia Gaparian, she's also hosting the same exact workshop on working with the faculty members. So we really want to showcase that we are working together to support teaching and learning in the classroom. And we are working with our TA as a team. Um, like I said, this is being recorded and um, and we um, the annotation is on, the scheme captioning is on. So feel free to move it around so that you can capture um, here, see the, so that you can see the, um, the script. Um, you can even enlarge it so then you can see the whole script too. And, and if there's, I also started sharing the slide and then if there's anything that I need to do to help you, um, again, we are learning I am still learning as a cave, um, able-bodied person. I'm still learning what I don't know. And let me know how I can make this workshop more accessible for you. Um, there's something that I may not be able to address right away. Like I said, I'm still learning, but your message, your private message can help me learn and make my next workshop a better workshop. Um, so I would like to acknowledge that I am facilitating the workshop from the unceded and ancestral land of the Miskwim people. I have learned that, but I have not learned fully why we are removing the word traditional. I'm still trying to find the link. A couple of colleagues have told me that the Miskwim, Miskwim people have advised us to take the word traditional out from our land enlargement. And this is a very good reminder for us that we need to pay attention. We need to listen to our, the people who've been guarding the space, the air, the land for us for so long. And there is reasons why we are calling it traditional. And now there's reason that is changing. So this is my commitment to myself that maybe after today, it, I tried to look, get up the information on the weekend, I couldn't find the information, but this is the advice that we've received that this is not the traditional land, this, but this is, we should continue to call it the unceded and ancestral land of the Muslim people. A little, why this is also important for me is I grew up, I was born and grew up on the other side of the Pacific Ocean in a colonial land. The space and the history and the people there and the historic significance over in Hong Kong in the last 150 years is different from this where we are now in Vancouver in on the Miskwim land. People around me has very different association when we hear the word colonial. And it's taken me a lot of time to unlearn what I know or what I experience. And we learn the Canadian context. It's an ongoing learning experience. And, and as we are learning, we also need to remind ourselves that our teaching assistants and our students, they are also learning. While the indigenous history and culture is now part of the BC curriculum, many of our students, and again, graduate students, mostly international students will have no understanding. And it's 
in this learning environment, we need to help. We we well, or we are learning, but we need to share our experience too. So yes, so I'm very thankful. I am sitting in front of a window, what that I'm looking directly into a tree, and really thinking about how the land has been kept and the air that I'm breathing in um, is because we are, I don't want to just say that indigenous people, but we also have the responsibility to keep our land and air clean and fresh and nourishing for all of us. So before we start, so I would like to get to know a little bit about who you are. Okay. We have enabled the annotation tool. So on the side, on the left side of your screen, you should be able to see a bar if you have a, the most, the more updated um, Zoom. Um, I just want to you use the annotation tool. You can use the join tool. You can use the STEM tool. It really doesn't matter. You are not graded by how you draw. I just want you to write down who you are. Like, what, is, what is your role here at teaching at UBC? So I'm going to start. I am going to put down, this is me, okay? The circle is me, Julie. But for each one of you, just write down, tell me, put a stamp, put a mark next to what identify you, what you associate with the most. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So many of us had TAs in the past. And I am just curious to know, well, you've had TA in the past when you are always welcome to learn, but we, I'm going to pick your brain. I want to, because I, I, for me, I, oh, I have not introduced myself. I talk about Shaya. I have not talked about introduce myself. My name is Judy Chen. I'm an education consultant at the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology. And over the last 15 years, I've been teaching one course. So my, my experience is very narrow. Okay, I've been only teaching sort of one course. I pick up one course once in, in almost 10 years ago. Um, I've always been teaching the same course. Um, of course, I will be in the same department and faculty. So my experience is very narrowed. And also because I, and so I rely on all of you to share your experience with each other. What has worked for you in the past and what is something that you learn and you're trying to avoid maybe in the future. So thank you very much for sharing. And we also had a couple people who've never worked with a TA in the past. I see a chat mark at the very bottom of the screen. I don't know who put that in. Is If you don't mind, let us know. Why is, Why are you putting the chat mark at the very bottom? Is, is it a mistake or is it something that is telling us that there's something that you would like to share with us? Okay, so the learning, what, what is this workshop? Why are we here? So by the end of the workshop, you will be able to explain some, not all, but some of the TAs right. Okay. Develop some strategies to prevent and stress some of the TA faculty challenge. We work with someone, when we work with people, there will always be challenge. Okay. Even your neighbor, your colleague, there will always be, when there's people, there will be different ideas, diverse experience, and there will be challenge. And let's just unservice them today and adjust them and prevent them. Okay. And hopefully at that time, we will be able to develop a contract or you will have some language to get yourself ready when you meet your TA for the first time. Okay. So I, 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 we call it a contract, but it can be a formal contract. Some faculty do have contracts available for you to use. Some you don't, but hopefully we will develop some language together. So quick agenda here. Um, we did a polling. What is your role of teaching at UBC? We are going to review some of the right and again, challenge and the writing contract. It's, uh, activity will align well with our learning objectives. 
Okay. We started doing a little bit of this, like for 20 seconds. But I'm going to give you another two minutes, okay, to think about that. Or maybe one minute. One minute first to think about that positive, effective, constructive faculty TA experience that you had or that you've heard of. Just continue to type multitasking, uh, or you can come back before back to the screen. We are going to really talk about an effective working relationship here. This doesn't need to be a TA or faculty relationship. In any work environment, building trust is sort of the big umbrella term here that we need to trust each other. We need to know who our TAs, who our TAs are, what do they like? We mentioned that there's someone who's with the aspiration, what, what do they decide to do? We, we, and I remember seeing some one of you type in you know, that we need to have a meeting to, to build that trust. And then, then we need to have effective way to communicate. And then again, this this is different from everyone, right? You, yourself, and the TA, one of you prefer emails, but the other one just loves to come to go have meetings face-to-face -face and let's talk things out. So there's different ways of communication and what is, what does it, what is effective to you may not be effective to your TA. And I remember at the, you, I cannot see it now because I'm facilitating, but you can actually scroll down to the bottom of page two. I remember one of you start talking about um, expectation. I think I saw that. So what is the expectation? When we talk about expectations here, we have two types of expectations too. And so the expectations is, we are talking about so many different expectations. There's our expectations of our TA and what is the TA's expectation when they sign up to be a TA? Do they want some experience? Do they really honestly truly just needed the money? Right? Why do they sign up? What is it? Or do they aspire to become a future faculty member like us? So we need to find out the expectation. And the final expectation, sometimes we forget, leave them out and I almost miss them, is the student's expectation. What does the students expect the TAs to do? Okay. I'm just going to stop here because we will come back later on. And now let's go into some TA policy. So at UBC, Okay, I will, I'm just going, I'm going off script as usual. I always like to go off script. Okay, if anyone can type in the QP number of our TA union in the chat, you can get a bonus 1%. No, 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 no. Um, there's no grading, there's no marking for the workshop, but just just something fun, okay? So t teaching assistant at UBC, um, they have a um, union to put that on. Um, to put that to negotiate the right and working conditions and um, to help the TAs to set boundaries and roles and responsibility. So um, there's a Q QP um, 22, I think it's 2278 um, is the union um, number names. And, um, and I have to let you know if you have just had TAs for the first a couple of times, your TAs will know about the rights and policy better than you do because this is important to them. And often we don't hear about this until quite late. So we are just going to pinpoint and share a few things that we think that faculty members should know as we embark this working relationship with them. So a full-time TA, the next question is full-time TA. What is a full-time TA will come next? But let's talk about a full-time TA. Um, a full-time TA come to use and would like to take vacation. 
So use the annotation tool button and um, let us know what do you think. A full-time TA would like to take the vacation. How many hours are they entitled to? 12 hours is the first. Number five, none of the above. Someone said in the, in the chat, none of the above question. Is it number five? None, because they do not get vacation. Eight hours. Okay, so the correct answer is number one, eight hours for a full-time TA. And a full-time TA, do we have that? A full-time TA is... Okay, now the next question. This is a combination of two questions together. Okay. Um, a full-time, how what is a full-time TA? And how many hours of sick leave can they get? Okay, it's two things. So last question, I'm holding, I'm not telling you yet what is the answer from the last one. Oh, more fours now. Or are you just circling or checking the one that someone else checked? So, okay, now let me give you the correct answer. Okay, so this is the, this is a full-time TA at the UBC Union is 194 hours. I'm sorry, 192 hours. I'm trying to do my quick math, make sure that I'm getting it right. So that's about 14 or 13 hours over 14 or 13 weeks. That's the math that I forgot um, about. So um, it's um, 192 hours per term. So from September to December, or January to April. And we are talking about the calendar years, September 1st to December 31st, okay? And they can get six, 12 hours of sick leave. And then based on the previous question is eight hours of vacation date. So just want to let you know for sick time, they have to be sick. They cannot be sick in the fence. They cannot know that they will be sick in the fence. And TA also get to accumulate sick hours. So if they are not sick from September, or if they were not sick last term, 2003 September to 2004 April, they can carry the sick hours to this coming terms. They can carry up to 24 hours, okay? This is, I just wanted to let you know, every department also handle it slightly differently. I teach from the Faculty of Land and Food System in our contract. Um, every, so I just want to say, because I know this Land and Food System faculty member here, um, what we've been told is exactly what we can ask our TAs to do. Uh, when, when we process the appointment, the additional hour has been added. So then they do get paid to get slightly more hours. So the math, just wanted to let you know, you need to find that they do have sick days and they do also have a vacation day. Okay, so when your TA come and ask you, you can at least say, oh yeah, I remember hearing about that. I don't remember exactly what to do, but you, it's not a shocking or surprise to you. Okay, so they do have that. And again, anytime question, you can let me know. And then next question. Okay. So our TAs also get guaranteed appointment. Okay. So um, once they've been hired once, so there's also guaranteed appointment. They don't necessarily need to work with you or your course, but the department or the faculty, again, every faculty department handles this slightly differently, will need to find position for them. Okay, so um, the correct answer is this. Okay, so a master, once a graduate student has been hired once, they do have guaranteed appointment in the future. I expect questions. I don't see any question. I know in the in-person workshop, I will be seeing I can see you. I can see that. Hey, you have a question. So I haven't seen anything in the chat. Okay, but I will keep going. 
Okay, this is a funny, this is a tricky question. This is meant to be tricky, okay? So the final exam is scheduled on April, 4, April 22nd at noon. Your TA will have the comprehensive exam the following day at 9.30. What should you do? So I see checking the number three, none. Okay, let me see. It's like, it's not, you cannot reschedule the final, right? You just cannot reschedule the final. It's almost impossible. It's really hard to reschedule final. I'll make another arrangement for a different refrigerator. So make arrangement with a different refrigerator. Yes, that seems to be a common option there, right? So again, the reason behind this is um, graduate students are here to learn. That's the primary goal for them to be here at UBC in our university environment. They are here to learn and therefore their own learning takes priority. So we cannot ask our TAs to do any work 24 hours before their own exam, including comprehensive exam for graduate students or if they're taking courses, um, and they also have final exams that we cannot ask them, we cannot expect them to do, we cannot ask them, expect them to do anything 24 hours before. So that would be something that you need to make arrangements. And again, every department is different. And please talk to your colleagues and the person who work with TAs to find out what is the best approach to find a replacement. Okay, how, how do we... Yes, so there are there are often someone in the department who has TAs who doesn't need to do all the work. They end up finishing the TA term earlier. They're super efficient, or you they of course end up having a smaller class size. So then we may be able to ask TAs with extra hours to come and invigilate for you. So again, this is every department is different. Um, I just want to share my experience once. I do have an undergraduate TA, um, and I often do because they're amazing. Um, I have an undergraduate TA basically have all for undergraduate students take about four or five courses a term. I have that student who has for basically the whole week. That student is, is just not able to work right yet. And as a human being, I cannot ask that even if there's no TA agreement, I just cannot ask that TA, that, that particular student to do any work for me because she herself has exam the day before and the few days and multiple exam on the day and the week after the my own final exam. So that TA and we were able to make some arrangement, um, but still it wasn't soft. It wasn't able to, we weren't able to solve all the situation, the problem, my problem, um, because you find out the exam schedule quite late. So again, if you also have undergraduate TAs or you have TAs who, who is taking a lot of courses or TAs who will have the comms, comprehensive ex exam coming up or defense coming up during the term, you may also need to pay attention. Okay. Um, we just introduced a few out policies here. There's like the whole um, collective agreement. And so I just wanted to let you know that they are protected. There's boundary that we need to feel, but at the same time, um, we may not remember all the details. I do not remember all the details because it's been changing. There's often update to make sure that those TAs in different situation um, will be protected. So I don't have the most updated information. And, but this is also, we should also know who are the people in our department to contact um, and, and, and know that TA work really hard and they, they deserve some protections too. And then, so is there any questions so far or any experience that you would like to share based on your interaction with your TAs in the past? No, I'm not seeing anything yet. 
So um, again, anything about TA rights, you really should contact the union rep or the president. Um, I know in the faculty of learning for system, no, I don't think so. Every year is different, right? And then again, TAs in different faculty and departments, they have their own TA groups. Um, and sometimes, I, 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 mean, I hesitate to say it because I, you know what, I shouldn't say it. Some, I wanted to say that they will have a TA rep too in the department. But I think I'm. I was going to say that because that just happened that one year, um, one of our graduate students in the department of faculty also is a union rep, so that's where we can get more direct information from the union. Um, but um, but if you have questions, you can always ask them. Again, we need to know that they exist. Okay, so now what we are going to do um, is to have you get into small groups. I am making a decision. Ah, people will see. People sign up <laughs> as soon as we say that they will be getting into groups. But if you're not able to talk, if you're driving, you are doing something else, you're listening, um, just continue to listen um, in the group discussion. So um, on your on the Google document that I just shared with you earlier, there are some challenge. Okay, that's okay. You're driving. I've said that many times. <laughs> it will be driving and, and listening to some very important, um, something important. So let them know that you're driving once you get there. Um, don't worry. I will help you. Um, I'm here in the back end helping. And so... So I'm going to get you into three different groups. So there will be groups of three or four people. And then, so according to your group number, then you will address the different challenge. So you will read the challenge together. And, and then, so the first, so the first room number one will read the first challenge, room two, second challenge, room three, and then we will rotate. So it's going to be, First time you are going to address the challenge. This is this is happening in your class. This is what your students bringing to your attention or fellow TAs that you're hearing, and so let's just address it now. Okay, for the next two seven minutes, you will think together on how to prevent it. What can we do now? Now that we've heard about such stories, what can we do to prevent the challenge? Okay. Okay. So sorry, I'm still doing rough calculation in my head. I think it's still going to work three rooms with three or four people each. If you happen to be in a room with only two of you can talk, I think two will still work. But if you happen that everyone who's driving are all happening in the room, that's okay. You can just talk to each other. Well, don't don't talk to each other when you get driving. That's listening is already too much. Um, we will figure that out. Julie will figure something out. Okay, so I'm going to split you into, give me a moment. I will split you up into your room. And I hope that with done me saying that you will also spend some time to introduce each other, um, share your positive experience with each other, and so it will be seven, seven minutes. I will give you a total of 15, let's do 16 minutes, okay? A um, hundred minutes on my thing because that's what I set up for my students when I teach, when I talk. Um, so breakout room will close after 16 minutes. That would be exactly 11.30, that would be a good time. So see you, you will be assigned into the room and you should just you will be you will be soon there automatically. Okay. See you in 60 minutes. Oh see now I get to see all of you. Because you had your camera on talking to each other. Now the me, the instructor gets to see. Oh, and I see a little doggy too. <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing. I am seeing 
I am based on what I see on the outside, on the movement, the, the typing of your, um, of the the how 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 thing has been added was taken away on the on the worksheet. I can see that some of them are hard, more challenging. It's harder to address, right? I didn't see the address of the first case until later time. We can think about how to prevent it. And I think, again, this is part of the reason we are doing it now. We are looking at how to prevent some of the situation. And I'm going to bring, I, I wanted to lie to you that I was like looking at all your responses and typing into this relationship model. I did not, I didn't have the, I don't have the skills to read and type at the same time. Um, but here are some of the things that we can do in a teaching faculty TA relationship. So, and I would like to invite you because I, I see the movement. I'm very curious what happened in your small breakout room. If you have something that you would like to sh share, please unmute yourself. Like what happened in the breakout room? What is something that you thought about that you discussed? That has not been summarized here on this slide. Okay. So until I see any movement or unmute or hands up, I will continue to talk, but I'd like to hear from you too. Like, um, align the expectation. Let the TAs know what what I needed from them. I, I think there's one, one of you mentioned that, what do I really need from the TAs? For me, I always tell my TAs, I need them to grade my team project. Whatever happened in the middle of the term, please make sure you save 20 hours, 15 hours to grade a project at the end, okay? I will take on the, the assignment. I will do other things. I, I may not need to do the final exam, but it's the team project that I need for help. That is my biggest thing. So please leave enough time. So again, what is what do you need from the TAs? What is something that you must ask them to do that's that you just cannot do it yourself anymore? And the priority. Again, I share my priority is that all the grading will be done by a certain number of dates or hours after the, the midterms and finals. Right. Every course is different. Your need for the TAs are different. Okay. And boundary. For example, my TAs almost never interact with my students. Okay. That's my boundary. That's what I want. But in your case, you might want your TAs to have office hour. Your TAs might also volunteer to have special tutorial hours. I've had that once. I, I, my TAs volunteer because there was actually extra time in the TA contract. So um, your preferred mode and timing for communication. This year, I know my TAs. I have three TAs working with me. They have their own communication. I don't know what they talk about, as long as they got the work done, if they are whining and vetting and complaining, they do it among themselves. They need that too, right? So we prefer more timing. And I, yes. So really let the TAs know what is your expectation and also listen to the TAs. What do they need from you? Okay. Define success. What does it mean to be a successful? At the end, if we celebrate, what is there to celebrate? What are we celebrating for? Okay, get the support that they need. The two, again, there's the TA union and many departments and faculty has their own TA support team groups. Um, there are some experienced TAs who can act as mentor. Um, I often assign. Well, again, in my in my faculty, we. The way it works in my faculty is we have an allocation of like 100 hours. I can hire one TA for 100 hours. I can hire two TAs for 50, 50 each. And I often, if I have a more experienced TA, I may give my experienced TA 55 hours and uh, the junior, newer TA 45 hours. 
So and then I I explain I will explain to my experienced TA that I have a little bit expectation of a leadership role there too. So again, counting on the experienced TA. And again, depending on how long you've been at UBC, many of you are new because this is the summer institute. Sometimes your TAs knows the system. Sometimes the TAs know the course, know how to use Canvas, know where the resources are better than ourselves. Right? They, they've been at UBC, especially the PhD students. They've been at UBC for a while. They've taught this course, the course that you're teaching. They've, they've TA'd it in the past. So they know the course and the system better than you do. So can alone, they can be there to support you and the rest of the TA teams. Time management, um, set guidelines, invite updates. Yes, and help them see um, the blind spot. Help them see their blind spot and ask them to help us, you, at our own blind spot. Because we are the... Um, there's in education field we have that um expert by smart. We know the content really well. Of course, we know how to do the equation and formulas and formulate a thesis statement. But the TAs they act as the buffer between us and the students. They may actually see things that we don't see from a more novice beginner learner experience. So get them. We help them to see their blind spot. They also help us too. It's a reciprocal relationship. Next. No question. This is really quiet. Okay, so I want we wanted to leave you some time to start your communication plan. We have a draft letter or a contract also on the Google Doc. Let me try to get that. Yeah, so if you scroll to the bottom, um, the idea is each one of you can grab one page, but I think a more efficient way is that um, you copy and paste this into your folder, your teaching folder, and, and type it in there. So you may not, if you type it in here, we can all see and share, we learn from you, but if you prefer to type it in your own document, that's okay too. So again, five minutes just to start, get started. How are you going to build trust? How can you find out what your TA needs and their own expectation of you? What does effective communication look like? Okay. And so just a few prompting questions for you to get started. Again, five minutes. And on my slide, I forgot <laughs> that this is, this is a little communication contract for yourself. And your first communication is draft your initial TA, your initial emails to your TA. Okay. And some of you may even, I, I would also imagine some of you is like, I don't even know where my TAs, who are my TAs? Or how do I contact them? How do I find them? Yes, as I sometimes the support for a new beginning faculty member is it's just there okay so again if you don't know who your TAs are and you don't know how many hours who they are and that please find the support from your department please please uh, I think this is I hope that this is for those of you who are starting new this is your first time having TA find out who they are who, who the TAs are and find out who your supports are who can help you in the department? Okay. And then again, one other thing, logistic. TAs are not supposed to start working before September 1st. We cannot ask them. Okay, what I do is I can, but my first sentence, my first sentence is you are not supposed to pay, um, start working until September 1st. If you are going to do anything for this course, please can track your hours. So I make it very clear that I thank them, I appreciate them for starting early. Here is the syllabus. You may want to review them. 
like make it very ambiguous, you might want to review the syllabus now. We will schedule. It depends. Sometimes I I've heard stories that TAs even some of the TAs are new to UBC. They don't even know where to check the emails. So it's not that they avoid working, they just don't know how. So then they may not be able to see your email until September 1st or until they land in Canada, until they get the internet at home. So you, that, the, so making that first contact can be very challenging too. Okay. So um, even if you can make the contact, you we are not supposed to ask them to do any work before September 1st. And for a term like this coming term where we are starting, our class is starting on September 3rd, I think, um, it can be a challenging situation. So again, you may want to schedule your first meeting and aim to have our first your first meeting with your TAs. And again, reading email, have meeting with you, these all count as work hours. And the more you acknowledge that, I think you will you will have TAs who will pay attention and thank you for looking after them. Well, sorry, this is my way of building trust. Um, but so make sure that you have this ready, contact your TA and know where your TA is, um, where they are in the desire, in the goal. If they wanted more teaching experience, they would aspire to become future faculty, perhaps give them that opportunity. But if your TAs are really just getting, doing the TA ship because they need the rent money and money to buy food, that's the reality here in Vancouver. So um, I we're near the end of this workshop. What is, is there any questions or something that you've learned that you experienced? I haven't heard from any of you yet. I've been able to see some of your comments on the on the share folder. But is there anything that you would like to ask or say before we log off? So just want to let you know additional communication. We have others. I will, we will share this slide deck with you. Um, there are other agreements that we gather because again, our we do at CTLT, we have two of us work. We usually work with TA representatives from different departments. And so we are able to, and we work quite closely with some TAs. Um, TAs are a graduate students. It's a big part of our graduate students program for graduate students. We have a peer-to-peer -peer model. So we do our best to gather what we can find from through our TAs and then to share it out with you. And so these are some of the um, guidelines information that is available on the internet. Again, we will share this, maybe, you know what, I will just, I can just pop it in the chat. Because since we are doing this in a online workshop, then we should take advantage of the, the chat. So some documents here is in the chat. You can copy and paste it late for, for you to use later. And I hope that you've, you've got something that you, can use and we start thinking. Um, working with TA, teaching with TAs is is another learning experience for many of us. Um, so I wish you all have a good, beautiful, constructive, effective TA relationship. And um, because if it's not, I've seen some of the work such as regrading. Regrading is not fun. So if we can do anything to prevent regrading at least in my world, with my course, I would be really happy. Make sure you spend the time. I I allocate, I have three TAs, so I allocate one and a half hours minimum just for our first meeting. The first meeting that we will talk about who we are, what they want to do, the future. That's an hour and a half hour of your TA hours for each one of them. So, but it's important to build that trust. Okay. So thank you very much. And um, I would like to thank from Shia and me. Um, we wish you a very beautiful, fun, rewarding term one. Thank you.